Recently, producer Jerry Bruckheimer has confirmed that there are two Pirates of the Caribbean films being planned, a spin-off starring Margot Robbie and a reboot. Although let's be real, it wouldn't be a reboot, it would exist in the same continuity and acknowledge the original films, but just have no returning characters and start a new story. Hollywood just doesn't know what reboot means. When this news broke, the first and only thought people had was, will Johnny Depp return? There is no Pirates of the Caribbean without Johnny Depp. And yet, there has not been any indication that he will return. I believe Jerry Bruckheimer said he wants Johnny to return, but that's not up to him. And while not all the films were about Jack Sparrow, the first three especially because those were about Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan, Jack is the heart and soul of this franchise while simultaneously being the best character not named Davy Jones. That being said, we don't really need him anymore. Jack Sparrow was the leading man in all five currently released Pirates of the Caribbean films and is regarded as one of the all-time great film characters. Hell, Johnny Depp got an Oscar nomination for this character. In the first three films are regarded as one of the great trilogies, we all know that. The fourth one, while being different and flawed, is still a great movie in its own right. But then when Dead Men Tell No Tales came out in 2017, perception really changed. The movie was criticized for completely ignoring previously established canon, not doing justice by its most iconic characters, having a villain that doesn't come anywhere close to stacking up to all the other villains in the series, and most importantly, for their treatment of Jack Sparrow himself, who spends the majority of the movie as a drunk idiot stumbling through its two and a half hour runtime with no clear indication of what he's doing, no explanation as to why he's acting like this, and he doesn't even get to fight the main villain. And when he finally does come face to face with the main villain, he's running away the entire time, as opposed to this. And while these arguments are all very true of the fifth movie, I'm not here to talk about those today. I'm here to talk specifically about the ending, because in my opinion, Dead Men Tell No Tales has the best ending in the franchise. Keep a weather eye on the horizon. Okay, second best ending in the franchise. For those of you who don't remember, which to be fair, you probably wouldn't. You probably watched the movie once in 2017 when it came out and decided to never watch it again. I am going to briefly recap the plot of Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales. Roughly 21 years after the events of At World's End, I'm not certain on that number, the timeline in this movie makes no sense whatsoever, Henry Turner, the son of Will and Elizabeth, teams up with Karina Smith, later revealed to be Barbosa's daughter, and a down-on-his-luck Jack Sparrow to find the Trident of Poseidon. They successfully complete this task, but it results in the death of Hector Barbosa when he sacrifices himself to defeat the villain Salazar and save his daughter daughter, Henry, and Jack, and the Black Pearl in the process. In the closing moments of the film, Henry welcomes his father home and there is a reunion between Will and Elizabeth as Jack Sparrow looks on from the deck of the now freed Black Pearl. What a truly revolting sight. And as much as I would like to talk about the beauty of Will and Elizabeth seeing each other again and bringing back one day the song that played when they split, I'm not here to talk about that uh, because the title of this video dictates I have to talk about Jack Sparrow. So that's what I'm going to do. The closing moments of this film reinstate Jack Sparrow as the captain of the Black Pearl. Barbosa freed it from the bottle well earlier in the movie, but Jack didn't get to captain it because he was immediately double-crossed, and then Salazar attacked, and then they went to get the trident. So we didn't get to see him as the captain of the Pearl. 
but now we do. And in addition to that, Gibbs, Scrum, Marty, and all the other crew members who are still alive and still in this movie are on board as well. Jack even has the monkey inherited from Barbosa. It's also worth noting that once Jack fully becomes captain of this ship again, he's no longer in his depressed, drunken stupor that we've seen him in for the rest of the movie. He feels, at the very end, like the Jack that we recognize. As Jack walks to the helm of the ship, Hans Zimmer's themes for these movies are brought back. And granted, they were used at various points in the film, but it's when they are brought back to their fullest and most authentic is right at the very end. I already mentioned one day coming back when Will and Elizabeth see each other again. The moment when Jack takes the helm of the pearl actually reuses the front part of that song, which is the music that plays over the victory in that movie. Indeed! The moment when they sail into the sunset uses a different but just as familiar and iconic piece of music. Stars play a massive factor in Dead Men Tell No Tales. Karina is a horologist, and that means she studies stars, and she mentions to all the pirates that they have to use the stars to find where they're going. They even let her helm the pearl because she's the only person who can understand the stars. The island where the trident is also looks like a field of stars. There's the star tattoo. They talk about how maps are more than just paper and stars are the biggest map of all. Stars are just basically the plot of the movie. So Jack has a line at the end to Gibbs that really ties all of that together. We shall follow the stars, Master Gibbs. Aye, aye, Captain. This line has a couple double meanings, which I think is brilliant because Jack in two through five is kind of directionless. I mean, the opening of the second film, he doesn't know where they're going. That's visualized in the void he's in in Davy Jones' locker and the compass just spinning. In On Stranger Tides, he's not even willingly on the adventure. And in Dead Men Tell No Tales, he's just a depressed, drunken idiot who has nowhere to go, nothing to do, has no ship, no crew, isn't even a captain anymore. On top of that, one of the biggest aspects of Jack's character in these movies is that he's one of the last pirates, and he has to grapple with that because piracy symbolizes freedom, and Jack likes his freedom. So Gibbs asking, What be our head, Captain? And Jack, knowing exactly where they're going, wraps up this arc that at times you kind of didn't know was happening. The last line in this film is one of my favorite things Jack Sparrow has ever said. A play on this very, very famous line. Now, bring me that horizon. I have a rendezvous beyond my beloved horizon. Here's why this line means so much. In the trilogy, there's a whole thing on charted waters and the loss of adventure. That's what Beckett is, and that's why we follow that map being progressively more completed as the film goes on. That is the mystery of the world being fully uncovered, and soon there will be nowhere you can go. The significance of Jack saying this is that it means that there is still adventure there, and wherever it is and however long it takes to find, Jack is determined to find it. Because as long as he has his pearl and the ocean, he's free. Because remember... What the Black Pearl really is, is freedom. And we get a sunset shot. A sunset shot is always great for a multitude of reasons, and one of the things it signifies is the ending of an arc, literally setting the sun on that story. And yes, I'm aware that On Stranger Tides ends with Jack walking into a sunset, but this ends with him literally sailing the pearl into a sunset. And that's just more fitting. 
For the first time in the series, Jack has proper freedom. He has no debts or scores to settle. He has no one after him. He has no one who wants his ship. He has his ship. He has the freedom he's been fighting for for all five movies. And I think it's very poetic that Jack's last act on screen is reuniting Will and Elizabeth a thing he did four movies prior in his first act on screen. I know that people say there can't be a Pirates of the Caribbean without Jack Sparrow, and while I agree that the popularity of these movies comes almost entirely from that character and Johnny Depp, I can't sit here and try to argue why he would need to come back in any capacity. His character has done what he set out to do, and his arc has been fulfilled. Whatever that adventure is that lies ahead, I would love to see. I would love to see many more adventures with Jack. In fact, my perfect Pirates of the Caribbean movie still incorporates Jack in some capacity. But I kind of think that's the beauty of it. Knowing that Jack has many more adventures after grappling with adventure and freedom coming to an end is really the only way you could ever do a send-off to Jack Sparrow. Wherever that compass is pointing, we don't need to know. Is Jack going to go try to find Barbosa and bring him back? Is he going to go try to find some other lost treasure? Is he going to leave the Caribbean and explore the world beyond? Who knows? It's not for us to know. I think it's better if we just sit back and dream of what wonderful adventure Jack Sparrow is going on this time.